slept like I used to sleep years ago. Like a miner or a soldier. Empty, dead tired. Then I saw Tessa, my darling little daughter. But no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't recall her face. I reached out to her, but she just kept getting further and further away. Then I saw Molly. But she wasn't real, just the ghost of a memory. I'm here, I cried, but all I heard was laughter. Not hers. Who's there? Suddenly, she appeared. Natasha. Just stood there laughing, but her eyes were cold. Then she said something. Painted red, painted red, painted red. That was just a dream, Sonny. Nothing more. I looked at Marty and I saw the same thing in his eyes as he probably saw in mine. It's time to hit the brakes, to turn back, go home and forget about all of this. <laughs> of course, I stepped on the gas instead. Honestly, I wasn't expecting anything good, but this... Ooh, just like a horror movie. I was thinking the same. Appearances can be deceiving. Let's hope so. This picture... It's very... Special? This pic... It's special? Even if you manage to escape, there's nothing but hills and forests for a hundred miles. Imagine how many poor lunatic ghosts must haunt those woods. Ooh, Sonny, you're creeping me out. Insane ghosts in the woods, Marty. Sonny, it's not funny. We should check in first. We should go to reception first. Let them know we're here. We need to let them know we're here first. This guy seems strangely familiar to me. You don't say. You've been treated here too. That would explain a lot. Oh, don't be stupid. I'm serious. Take a closer look. No. Well? No, it can't be. Are you telling me it's him? M.B. Davis himself? I'm sure of it, pal. It seems the gossip was true. The eternal king of jazz in a madhouse. Oh, no, no. No. The poor devil. Huh. It doesn't matter how big a star you once were. Ending up lonely and crazy in a rotting insane asylum in the middle of nowhere is like the universe restoring its balance. That was very uh, poetic of you, Marty. Almost deep. Careful you don't drown. Cluck you. Huh. It doesn't... Ah, like an angel from heaven, isn't she? Yeah, half of her's still up there, I think. That's rude. Oh, boo-hoo. What do you think? Can she hear us up there? Sonny, stop being so heightist. It's a different world nowadays, you know? Yeah, yeah, okay. Cry me a river. I'm forever amazed by what an asshole you are. What do you think? Can of all the great wild ones. Greetings, miss. Is it really you? Well, uh, yes. Yes, it really is you. The chicken police. 
I'm afraid so. Oh, of all that's furry and plumy, that's fantastic! Oh my goodness! Uh, miss, we'd like to ask... Please, don't be scared. I'm just really, really, really excited. You know, I've read every book about you and your adventures, and I even collected newspaper articles when I was a little girl. Indeed. You can't imagine what an honor it is to meet you in person. We really... Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Take a deep breath, Miranda. Take a deep breath. Are you okay, miss? Yes, I am. I just needed some... air. So, dear detectives, Santino and Martin, what can I do for you? Well, miss, uh, we have some questions, if you don't mind. I'd love to answer all of your questions, detectives. What do you think? Sorry, but I still can't believe it's really you. Neither can we. You can't imagine how wonderful it is that I can help you in one of your cases. <gasps> Does this mean it will become a new book? And maybe I will be in it? Uh, miss, those books aren't really... Don't even tell me. No, no, no. I don't want to know. Let it be a surprise instead. No, I, I didn't mean... Leave it to me, Sonny. I'm good at this. Thank you, miss. Your words are very flattering, and we are honored. No, I thank you. I'll never forget this day. We won't either, that's for sure. We're happy to bring you joy, miss. Anytime. Please, I'm at your service. Thank you, miss. Say, miss, uh, what can you tell us about this place? Our institution was standing even before the Great Meat War, and during the war, it was transformed into a military hospital. Since then, we are relentlessly working on treating injured minds under the leadership of Dr. Quetzal, the famous specialist. The place seems pretty empty. Do many people work here? We have 32 residents and seven nurses, including me. We also have a three-person maintenance and cleaning staff and, of course, the heart and soul of our institution, Dr. Quetzal himself. I see. Now, this Dr. Quetzal, is he the director here? Exactly. Director, scientist, researcher, patron, and doctor. And even a friend. Quite a guy. He certainly is. So who is this Dr. Quetzal exactly? He's a world-famous researcher of the mind, Mr. Featherland. He published countless books in the fields of psychology and psychotherapy. Psycho... what? Unraveling the mind. It's the most crucial mission of the century, Mr. McChicken. That's really good to know. So this doctor's some celebrity, right? Does he usually meet uh, other important persons? I'm not sure I know what you mean. Well, like, uh, Mr. Hobart Wessler, for example. Ah, yes. That's something you should ask the doctor himself, but unfortunately, I don't think he has time right now. He's swamped, is he? Exactly, Mr. Featherland. He is very, very, very busy. All the time. I thought so. Uh, what can you say about this, miss? Have you uh, seen anything like it? Of course. Our residents wear these for identification. But how did you come by it? They only wear them inside the institution. Huh. I see. The wristband does belong to one of our residents. But I'm afraid I'm not allowed to tell you more due to regulations. Oh, come on, Miranda. It's us, the chicken police. I'm sorry, I, I can't. Miranda, this case is a matter of life and death. Lives are in your hands. <sighs> All right. All right. I'll do it. 
Albert Wessler. The patient's name is Albert Taddeus Wessler. Figures. Just as we thought. Thank you, Miranda. We'll never forget this. Please, don't make me blush. And don't tell anyone you heard it from me. Oh, we won't. I promise. So when can we talk to Mr. Wessler? I need to ask Dr. Quetzal. Please wait here. Thank you. No. No. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Insane. This picture. Well, it must have been made by one of the patients, so it's understandable. It's the handiwork of our director. He's not only a scientist, but he's a great painter, too. I see. Well, it's lovely to have a hobby, right? That's right, Marty. Art heals, doesn't it? Exactly, officers. Dr. Quetzal will see you. He's waiting for you in his office. Up the stairs, all the way down the hall, until the last door. What a surprise. It's enough to mention Wessler's name and all the doors are open. I wouldn't want to get mixed up in this, but do you think Albert is in danger? Danger? What do you mean? We haven't heard from him since he disappeared, and we're really, really worried. I see. Uh, we don't know yet, miss, but let's hope for the best. Great Wild Ones protect him. Where is he? No idea, Marty. The smell ugh, of all that's furry. I'll never get used to it. Well, reptiles have a disgusting body odor, Marty. But they feel exactly the same about us. Exactly. Great wild ones, you scared the hell out of me. I already sensed your arrival from afar. You know, snakes have a different sense of smell. And birds used to be our prey once upon a time. Well, yeah. Luckily, we're living in civilized times. Lucky. Please, take a seat. How can I help you, gentlemen? Your office is, uh, rather Puritan. <laughs> Simple, I mean. Ain't that the truth? Well, yes. I can't let my mind wander from my work. I only keep what's essential in my office. I see. That makes sense. Is this cell like, uh, like the others? I would rather call it a room. But yes, it's like all the others, except there are even bigger ones than this. Is this set? Why do you have bars on your windows? Because it's a room like all the others, and I'm just an animal too, like all our residents. With the significant difference of you being a doctor and not a patient, am I right? It's not as big of a difference as you'd think. So, escaping is impossible. If I'd want to escape, I have the privilege of using the door. <laughs> is this cell like... An isle of reason in a sea of insanity. Insanity is such a strong word, and it's mostly an abstract idea. Where does insanity start, and how long is one not insane? Interesting questions. Am I normal, or are you maybe neither of us? You see, that's something I think about a lot nowadays. If you like, I can give you an appointment. 
Oh, this is your chance, Sonny. Don't miss it. We're already here. Marty, clock up. Are you very busy? I am. A snake. I can't help it, but they make my feathers stand on end. I have a hard time bearing their proximity. My blood boils and my heart bangs. It's the primordial fear, they say. I have a hard time... To be honest, gentlemen, your visit is anything but a surprise. I could even say I was expecting it. What an introduction. Please forgive me. I have the bad habit of immediately getting into the middle of things. How very rude of me. My name is Dr. Seth. He was Quetzalcoatl, but most call me Dr. Quetzal to keep it simple. The name is Santino Featherland, and this is my partner, Martin McChicken, from... From the Predatory Division of the Clawville Police Department. Your fame is one step ahead of you. Ah, we're used to it. Certainly. We have some questions about one of your patients, if you don't mind. We'd like to talk to him, if that's possible. Please be specific, detective. Look, Doctor, we're too tired to play cat and mouse. Not that snake and chicken sounds any better. Very funny, I must say. Just what I expected from you two detectives. We know you know it's about Albert Wessler. Ibn Wessler's secret twin. Ever since we've said his name, all the doors have miraculously opened. That's what we call a bullseye. Well, yes. Why should I deny it? We're talking about a rather illustrious patient here, who's also a very particular medical case. Now, that's much more interesting. So, are you willing to talk about him? Because Albert regrettably has disappeared, and you are police detectives, I have no reason not to talk to you. Of course, I'm at your service. But you must understand, I can't disclose information about my patients. Not even if it's a matter of life and death? Everything's a matter of life and death in here, detective. This is a hospital, even if it's primarily for the mind, not the body. Still, I'd like to give the impossible a try. Please, detective, just do your job, and I'll do mine. So, what do you want to know, gentlemen? Let's see. How long was Albert a resident of the institution? For quite some time. His first symptoms surfaced in his teens. Depression, panic attacks, and schizophrenia. Was he brought here immediately after the first signs that something wasn't right? You know, the biggest problem with an opinion on insanity is that animals are ashamed of it. That's the reason our institution stands out here in the middle of nowhere. Because animals would rather hide what they're afraid to face. I couldn't have said it better myself. As far as I know, the Wessler family wasn't exceptionally wealthy. Indeed, they were rather poor, but we offer our services gratis. Then how do you sustain yourselves? By the grace of the treasury of King Hector III, of course. I wouldn't have guessed that. My family and the royal dynasty had always been on good terms, Mr. Santino. Tell me, Doctor, do you know Madame Zavas? Just like everybody else, I've heard of her. But I never had the pleasure of meeting her in person. I'm sure she's an interesting case. 
Oh, you can be sure about that. I'd gladly get you two together if I had the chance. A spare cell would suit her very much. Is that so? As it turns out, she likes small, narrow, secret places. Oh, I see. What a coincidence. What kind of a place is this, exactly? I assume it wasn't built as an insane asylum. It used to be a mansion. Construction started during the occupation in 622. Then it stood empty for almost a century, until finally it went to the crown of Clawville when Hector's great-grandfather took the throne. The rest is history. How long have you been working here? I've worked here for more than 30 years, but it's been in my family's possession for almost 150 years. So if I count correctly, as soon as it went to the crown, it was seized by your family. That's almost accurate, Mr. Featherland. What a lovely inheritance. Hmm, Dr. Quetzal's a real mystery. But I can turn that to my advantage. I just need to focus on the strangest pieces of the puzzle. So when did Albert become a resident of your institute? Albert and Hobart, or Ibn as you call him, arrived here almost exactly four years ago. Could you describe that day uh, more specifically? It was not long after New Year's Eve. Maybe the first week of the year, if I'm not mistaken. It was sleeting that day. Wind was banging incessantly on the windows. The power was going out for short periods of time. What was your first impression of them? I already knew the Wessler name. I knew who they were, or at least I knew one of them, Hobart Wessler. He was famous, gangster, moneylender, celebrity, lover. And Albert? He was new to me, an invisible gray ghost. The family had tried to keep his existence a secret. Why? Because they were ashamed of him, of course, Mr. Featherland. That's how it usually is. What was your first impression of him? He was silent, but observed everything that surrounded him. His eyes were constantly moving, never stopped for a second. Was he afraid? I wouldn't say so. It seemed to me that he wanted to move into our institution voluntarily. It looked as if he couldn't wait to be here, alone, locked up in silence and darkness. Didn't you think of that as unusual? Of course I did. But who am I to judge? It was rather special treatment. What kind of special treatment did Albert get? You know, if an institution like ours has to accept a Wessler as a guest, there's bound to be some favoritism. And complete secrecy, I guess. Yes, but that's the case for all our patients, Mr. Featherland. Of course. So in what way did he receive more than the others? Basically, we don't admit anyone into our institution without a complete and thorough prior assessment. In the case of Albert, we put that aside. So you didn't even know if he had anything wrong with him? Initially, no. He was more of a guest than a patient. How did you see Albert when you first met? Albert was shy and reserved, like a ghost. He almost never touched anything. 
It was evident. He was exceptionally intelligent. He measured and observed everything around him. What else? He was delicate and graceful, almost like a woman. Yes. He was rather feminine. He was an artist. Mr. Featherland, a magnificent painter and rather good writer too. Sometimes I even heard him sing. Why did he have to be locked up? I asked the same thing at first. Are you telling me Albert had multiple personalities? We found out very quickly that there was no other reason for the cause of his seizures. He had a cold and calculating personality who sometimes, especially on stormy days, took the reins over their shared mind. He had these seizures from the beginning. Yes, Mr. Featherland, but they started to intensify after Albert left our institution for the first time. He did what? Left the institution? More than once? Oh, yes, Mr. Featherland. Albert left the institution on several occasions until the last time when he failed to come back. Wetzel's not only very observant, but he's addicted to details. I must focus on that if I want to get closer to the truth. Focus. Addicted to details. When and why did Albert leave the institution for the first time? It was about two years ago. Mr. Hobart Wessler appeared and demanded we let his brother go free. Naturally, we obliged. We had no idea if we'd ever see him again. But you did. He returned the same day. Albert was ecstatic. He was unrestrained. I could almost say <laughs> happy. That was unusual for him. I had never seen him like that before, Mr. Featherland. He just smiled and stared at the empty wall for hours. Did he ever tell you what happened to him outside? Of course he did. Albert and I had a good relationship. He was working on a painting for his brother. Was it a painting of a lovely lady cat? Oh, exactly. So you already knew about that. Yes, Dr. Quetzal, I've seen it. Did Albert tell you how he felt about the painting? From the first moment, he loved it. He was fascinated by it. But who could blame him? A little diversity, fresh air, a beautiful lady. And of course, on top of all that, he could finally do what he loved best, paint. Which could be a surprisingly effective therapy. It could have been. Unfortunately, these excursions have greatly intensified his seizures. They have become more frequent and extreme. So Albert left on many occasions to continue working on the painting. Exactly, Mr. Featherland. Every time he came back, he was like a different person. But unfortunately, his seizures also multiplied and became more dangerous. More dangerous? Albert was hurting himself. And on one occasion, he even tried to hurt me. It was unprecedented. It seemed his confined personality was taking over their shared mind entirely. Peace. 
by peace. Do you think the painting caused it? Not the painting, Mr. Featherland. But its subject. Exactly. He was obsessed right until that fateful day when he returned to us for the last time. What exactly happened that day, Doctor? It wasn't Hobart who brought his brother back that day, but two of his gorillas. Not literally, I mean. And Albert was in a terrible, terrible state. What happened to him? I don't like to talk about that, Mr. Featherland. It could be vital to the case, Dr. Quetzal. Don't back down. Oh, you're right. There's no use turning back now. So, Albert's tongue was torn out, or cut off, I don't know exactly, and he was blinded in one eye, or rather, one of his eyes was missing entirely. So you're saying Albert was brought back horribly mutilated? Yes. And they didn't give any explanation as to what had happened. They simply told me it was some kind of accident. Dr. Quetzal is cold and professional, but he's also very confused. Maybe it's cruel, but I must exploit his vulnerability if I want to learn everything about Albert. Focus, confused. Maybe it's not easy for you to talk about it, but did you examine his wounds thoroughly? I'm not that kind of doctor, Mr. Featherland, but even I could determine his tongue was either cut out or bitten off, and his eye was gouged out. He also had several broken bones. But there's no doubt it wasn't an accident. I don't believe it was, Mr. Featherland. I totally agree. Concentrate, Doctor. What do you think happened to Albert? I'm sure it was Hobart. He ordered his men to mutilate poor Albert. But why would he do that? Maybe Albert saw something he could accidentally reveal. To whom? The four walls, a couple of crazies, you? To anyone, Mr. Featherland. I don't think it's that simple, Doctor. But thank you for your honest opinion. You're welcome, Detective. What happened then? How did Albert disappear? A few weeks later, Hobart came to visit Albert one more time. Albert had been in terrible condition by then. We even had to transfer him to another cell, a more safe one. What did Hobart do during the visit? He didn't do anything. He just sat and watched his brother, who was <sighs> in an almost vegetative state by then. Couldn't you manage to draw anything out of him? You or Hobart? Nothing. For a while, he was trying to signal something. Perhaps he was too afraid. And most likely his fingers had been broken too, so he couldn't even write. Do you think Hobart could have killed Albert? It's horrible to say it, but I'm sure of it. How did he disappear in the end? Did someone come for him? That's what's most eerie about it all, Mr. Featherland. He simply disappeared. His door, which only I had a key for, was open. Did anyone see anything? No one. We interrogated the staff, even the patients. He simply vanished off the face of the wilderness. We don't know what happened to him. Unfortunately, I have a hunch. Thank you, Doctor. You've been a great help. Oh, well, I'm glad I could be of help. 
But please, I now must attend to my work. We understand, Doctor. Thank you. That's quite shocking information. I think you understand why we kept it a secret. If it wasn't for Mr. Wessler's demand, we'd never let any of our patients walk freely outside our institution. Then the, uh, the accident happened. Accident? <laughs> we didn't believe it, not for a second. After Albert came back to us, horribly mutilated, he was different. Different how? If someone got one of his eyes poked out and his tongue torn out, he'd be different, but not like this. Albert was a different person. We believe you, Doctor. So, can we take a look at Albert's cell? I'd rather call it his room. Mr. Wessler lived in exceptional circumstances. Thanks to the Wessler name, I guess. Yes. Well, we try to make all of our patients stay as comfortable as possible, but Albert certainly enjoyed mm, special favoritism. I hope you don't mind if we take a look around in there. That's not going to bother anyone. Well, that's, uh, surprising. I've never seen a cell like this before, that's for sure. I wouldn't mind living here myself. It seems that being a Wessler gets you privileges. And a healthy dose of danger. Mostly that, yeah. Let's take a good look around. I'm sure we'll find some answers here. I can almost smell them. Well, I smell... paint? Ink? Plaster? Some kind of oil? Aging paper? Slight smell of rat? And... great expectations? What the dickens? Unmistakable. Yeah. This place is bad for you, pal. But if you've already jump-started your beak holes, then sniff out the solution. I'm on it, boss bird. The style. It's very familiar to me. You've been lonely for far too long, huh? Not funny, Marty. It is, a little. So this is an original Albert Wessler? I think so. It's pretty good, I must say. And I saw something very similar in Natasha's room. You kept me out of it. Sorry, little boy. Maybe next time. Whew, it's hot in here. Okay, Marty, that's enough. No way! Is this some kind of puzzle? I don't think so, but we could still find something important here. A pattern, a sign, anything. A small window, a small hope, a small window.
You know, I don't think he had it so bad in here. You mean, apart from being separated from everyone you love in an ancient mansion filled with madmen? Eh, you're right. As always. Well, I guess the bed has to find a new owner soon. Are you really so sure he's not alive anymore? No, I never said that. Well, I guess... Scribbles, newspaper articles, study papers, poems, perfect chaos. Just like the troubled mind of a troubled fella. Yeah, but there's still a kind of order in it. It's just too intricate for you to comprehend. If you say so, boss. Isn't this familiar, Sonny? Just like your office and your desk. Taking a better look around, I can find even more similarities. Marty. Okay, okay. Shut up, Marty. I know. Isn't this f Identical twins. And looking at it, they may have easily loved the same woman. Two men and one woman. Nothing good ever comes of that. <clears throat> well, I wouldn't say that exactly. Of all the wild ones, Marty, please, stitch up your beak, okay? Just use your imagination, old bird.
Look at that. A letter. That design, it's like two letters. Exactly. And where have we seen these two letters? Um, where? Think, Marty. Let's take a look in our bag. That piece of painting? Of course. So it's a signature. A.W., that's... Albert Wessler, the painter. This was what Natasha wanted to show us. The link between Ibn, Albert, and her. It all started with the painting. Yeah, and it'll end when we find the painting. With Ibn Wessler. Maybe, but I have another theory, too.
identical twins. And looking at it, they may have easily loved the same woman. Albert was madly in love with Natasha and would have done anything for her. I'm afraid he did exactly that. Albert was mad. What do you make of this? Apart from the fact the guy was totally insane? I don't know. What should I? That maybe we've been chasing the wrong person all this time, Marty. What do you mean? Everything will be revealed soon. Why do you have to be so melodramatic all of a sudden? If I'm right, this'll flip the whole case upside down. What's that, Sonny? A blurb from some horrible novel? I just have to think things through before I come to any hasty conclusions, Marty. Ugh, you're killing me. So, what now? Where to? Back to Clawville, where we can finally put all the pieces together. <sighs> you're driving me crazy. But all right, let's go home. I have a hard time. So, detectives, have you found what you were looking for? I'm afraid we have, Doctor. And more. I wouldn't dare to say I'm happy to hear it, but I'm glad to be of service to you. Well, thanks, Doc. I hope I don't offend you by saying I hope we're not going to meet any time soon. <laughs> not on account of either of our jobs, am I right? Exactly. Goodbye, Doctor. Goodbye, detectives. Are you very busy? Farewell, Miranda, dear. Lovely to meet you. So, you'll remember my name? Marty McChicken never forgets, ma'am. Oh... Furry gods. Let's go. Goodbye, miss. It was a pleasure. Goodbye, gentlemen. And happy investigating. I'm sure it'll be fun. If there's anything I can help you with, please just ask. Thank you, Miranda. You've already helped enough. Please, I'm at your service. Thank you, miss. We need to let them know we're here first. Huh. It doesn't matter. Art heals. Oh, I don't believe this. Those two again? Take them out. My car won't last much longer. Don't worry, Sonny. I was born to do this. Concentrate, Marty, for the God's sake. Can you drive like you're not a fucking lunatic? Shut up and shoot, you big feather pillow.
Where did you learn to shoot? Well, that was close. A little too close for my taste. And it only strengthens my belief. Wessler is desperate. He knows if we survive, he's done for. Well, come on, what did you work out? Will you tell me already? Sure. Let's put the picture together, piece by piece. Let's start from the beginning. So, we got a case. could take his place in secret and win Natasha's heart. So what happens now? The inevitable, Marty. We're going to the Wessler Mansion to confront Ibn with the facts. You mean Albert, right? Yeah, exactly. And of course, Natasha. Do you think she knew about it? Something stinks, Marty. The whole case seems too intricate. Hmm, too many coincidences, right? Well, well, after ten years, you did learn something, didn't you? Nine. <laughs> You're right. Huh. What? You just laughed, Sonny. What? No, I, I... I snorted. No, you laughed. Ah, just leave it, Marty. <laughs> I'll be telling this to my grandchicks. <laughs> All right, pal, that's enough. Okay, okay. So, Albert fell madly in love with Natasha and decided to have her for himself. And his best chance was to trade places with Ibn Wessler. So that's why the torn out tongue. Yeah, Ibn couldn't squeal even if he wanted to. What a diabolical plan. More like insane. But why the messages then? Why the threats? Albert got what he wanted. He could have got away with it. I'm not a psychologist, Marty. But remember what the doctor told us. Albert has a seriously injured mind and a split personality. I think his two identities were at war with each other. So the messages were written by one of his personalities, consumed by jealousy? Something like that, Marty. But we can only learn the whole truth from him. You're right. So, are we going or what? We're going, Marty, to finally finish what we started. Well, if there's anything you'd like to do before, do it now, boss. You won't have a chance later. You're right, Marty. It's time to wrap everything up.
Lewis became kind of part of the team in the end, didn't he? You mean Leopold? Ah, damn it. Did I mess that up again? No, I'm just joking. You said it right this time. Huh. You know, if it weren't for the bunny, we never would have made it this far. We can't deny that even if we want to. We owe him a lot. Hey, Lewis. You weren't awake all night because of us, were you? I've never been this excited, Sonny. Seriously, it is a great honor to be part of the team. What is it? You, Lewis. You don't stutter anymore. What? Just now, you... you didn't stutter. Not even a little. Oh. I must be exhausted. I it happens sometimes. And it's b b back. So, uh, thanks again, Lewis. You always get us out of trouble. Come on, b b boys. Don't even m m mention it. It is me who is grateful to be a b b part of an adventure of the ch ch chicken police. Maybe the last one, too. Hey, Sonny. Don't spoil his mood. He's so cute. P -p Pardon? Nothing. Nothing. So, you're going now to confront Mr. W w Whistler? We have no other choice, Lewis. We're gonna see it through to the end. We've already come this far. You're brave, gentlemen. I'm honestly impressed. Well, the rabbit's on to something. This isn't about money. Not about courage or pride either. It's simply... Stubbornness? Mostly, yeah. Well, g -g 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 good luck, guys. Thanks, Lewis. We could use some luck, that's for sure. It hurts even to think about it. But without this feather duster, it wouldn't have worked. I hope he'll be okay this time. Because if he gets hurt, Laura will literally tear out my throat. Look, Sonny. I think if we go now, there's no turning back. Not today, at least. So, are you ready? I'm still thinking about it, Marty. Look, Sonny. I think if we go now, there's no turning back. I just realized. Ibn at the Czar Club. Yes, Marty. Albert's been Ibn for a long time now. Do you remember what Natasha said about him? That he's been acting strange recently? Exactly. Like, he's not himself anymore. It was almost hitting us in the face, huh? Don't blame yourself, Marty. We couldn't have figured that out just by ourselves. The whole story's too twisted for that. Well, it's how we make our living, Sonny. And I'm sure we'll have plenty more twisted cases to come. Who knows, Marty? It's not up to us. It's mostly not up to us, in fact. Yeah, right. Do you think the asylum was in on it? I mean, covering up Albert's disappearance? You know that reptiles give me the creeps. One of them even set fire to that ship. But oddly enough, the doctor seemed honest to me. He seemed like a patient to me. Seriously, I thought everyone was crazy in that place. Yeah, whoever fights monsters should see to it that in the process, he doesn't become a monster. Are you still talking about the doctor? <laughs> Good question. So, what's the plan? We shove the letter in our theory in his face and see what happens? Something like that, Marty. I think our presence will be enough for the truth to come out. I really hope you're right, Boss Bird. We have no other choice, so I hope so too. Do you think it's a love triangle? I mean, could Natasha love Albert as well? Good question, Marty, but I don't think so. When I first spoke to Natasha, she told me she loved Ibn in her own way. In her own way, huh? And could she love two rats in her own way? Maybe. Maybe she even suspected the truth, but didn't dare admit it, even to herself. Hmm. 
So what do you think now that it's clearer? I don't know, Marty, but I believe Natasha didn't mean to be bad. Not intentionally, at least. I'm not as sure of that as you are, boss, but we'll find that out pretty soon, I guess. I think Natasha was very much aware that wherever she goes, disaster follows her. But it's not her fault, and she can't do anything about it. There are people like that. Really? You don't say. Someone remarkably similar came to mind right now. You mean me, right? Who can even read minds? Maybe you're right, Marty. Maybe you're right. This fog's almost impenetrable. Strange, but somehow this time I feel it's a good omen. Really? How come? I don't know. It's like the light at the end of the tunnel without the light. Oh, you're not getting ready to die, are you, old man? If we're going on a suicide mission, I think I should know. Why, haven't I told you yet? You're not funny. The city seems almost clean this time. Silent, mute, not of this world. Good gods, you're really getting ready to die, aren't you? I'm just messing with you, Marty. Relax. Yeah, thanks. Very relaxing. Into the unknown, right? Like you say, partner. I never thought I'd ever look at this place and think of it as home. <laughs> Life's weird, isn't it? I didn't think that after what I did to you, we'd work together again. You mean when you shot me? You know I had my reasons, Sonny. Yeah. Have I ever, uh, apologized? I don't think so. Then let's leave it that way. Hey, I apologize for shooting you, Boss Bird. That's okay, Marty. It happens even to the best of friends. <laughs> I'll remember what you've just said, and I'll never forget it. Yeah, well, don't try to take advantage of it. Who, me? What do you think of me? Relax, soldier. It'll be fine. Huh? Well, why do you say that? <laughs> you were staring at that building so hard, I thought you could use some encouragement. Are you shitting me? You're enjoying this, aren't you? Not at all. I have feelings too, you know. I never said otherwise. Farewell, my lovely. Do you remember that case with the goat? Uh, which one? When that demented wolf devoured the kids of a young goat mother, and in revenge, she cut open his stomach and filled it with rocks. Do I remember? I'll never forget it. Hell, that was a slaughterhouse. As far as I know, she even took the remains of the kids with her. But how did that come to mind? This was that shop. The goat mother was running it. They found the dead wolf in here. This? This one exactly? Good gods. Yeah, before it was closed down, when there was still some life here. Not even that now, just the void. Yeah, spooky place, that's for sure. Still, I love to live here. Sonny, you're creepy. Eesh. Just looking at the window gives me the creeps. Yeah, you know, it's funny. The shop used to be open for a while, even after the incident. One of the goat's relatives was running it until someone from the dead wolf's family tried to burn it down. Oh yeah, that's funny. Eesh. I see we're ready. You'll need a shotgun for this kind of deal, Marty. Maybe even that won't be enough. Nothing to fear while Bertha's here. Even less because you're here too with Mr. Sinclair, of course. Should I cry? That would be nice for a change. Ah, Her Majesty Bertha II. My drumstick still hurts every time I see her. Be glad you're alive. Bertha rarely leaves witnesses. 
Ah, her. It's a little outdated, but I understand why you're so attached to it. It can pierce the skin of a rhino, Marty, and the rust brings back memories. I'm a man of bad habits. You know, sometimes I feel like I'm one of your bad habits. Rest assured, Marty, you are. If we survive this, can we crack this open? I'd rather keep it for a really special occasion. <gasps> You're saying I'm not special enough? I was joking. If we survive this, we'll drink it to the last drop. <laughs> now you're talking. If we survive... You think you'll need your fake badge? I never needed a badge, Marty. What a punchline. It's more like a kind of good luck charm. It reminds me of who I should be. And? Does it work? No, Marty. Not really. If our theory's correct, this photo will hurt more than a bullet. That's the plan. Do you think that'll be enough? Enough evidence. Not in the slightest. That's why we go unannounced. And with big guns. Exactly. I like this new Sonny. There is no new Sonny. Just the old ones had enough. Forget anything, Sonny? No, I just thought I'd take a look. Might be the last time I see it. You becoming sentimental? Who knows? Maybe I am. Oh, that's cute. Should I say it? I know, Sonny. I can still get out. But you won't. On the beak. Thanks, pal. Forget about it. I'd be bored to death otherwise. I can't even recognize the city in daylight. Like a raving lunatic while asleep, right? It's like we're the only ones awake in the whole world. What was the last book you read, Sonny? Something by Herringway, if I remember correctly. Wow, really? No. Oh. Strange. If they weren't here anymore, I'd miss them even though I know I'm never going to read them. Strain. Huh, maybe I am. I've had enough. Buddy, you really need a secretary. I thought about it too, Marty, but I'm still searching for a lunatic who'd take the job. I'm sure Lewis would do it. <laughs> I'd love to see him in a fancy little skirt. Moron, but at least you finally managed to remember his name. Really? Shit. I was trying to say it wrong. If only Monica would take the job. What are you hiding in there, Sonny? You know, it's funny. I have no idea. I lost the key. You want me to open it for you? I got a method. Don't shoot my cabinet, Marty. Ah, okay. If I remember correctly, I threw away the key while I was drunk. Or swallowed it. 119 days left, Marty, and I'm out of here. As soon as I get my discharge papers, I'm leaving for the wilderness on the first flight. Ah, uh, you know, I envy you a little. Eh, it's not gonna be the real thing. Not on my own. Why don't you take Natasha with you? <laughs> what are you even talking about? Come on, Sonny. Cut the act. Or maybe going home to Averia. I'm never going to leave this place. Am I right? I'm never going to... Abandon hope, all ye who enter here. Very funny. <laughs> funny because it's true. When all of this is over, I'm gonna clean up the place. Really. When all of this... A closet that's closed forever. 
I'm pretty, am I? I simply can't take my eyes off you. Good. I'm pretty, am I? simply can't. Good. You know, pulling the trigger was the toughest decision of my life. You mean when you shot me? Yeah. But it wasn't hard, because you thought you'd kill me. Not at all, Sonny. I knew you'd survive. I wanted it to be a permanent injury and hurt like clucking hell. But I knew that everything would change from then on. That something was gonna break between us? Yeah. And that I was never gonna be the same either. With that shot, I also gunned down who I was, you know? It really did hurt like hell. I know. I almost bled to death. Almost was the goal. And? Did you manage to forgive me since then? Well, what hurt me wasn't what you did. I mean, of course it did, but what hurt the most was you not trusting me. That you didn't believe me. Not until you pulled the trigger. At that moment, I knew you were right. Ah, cluck. Yeah, cluck. All right, enough sentimental crap. We have an insane rat waiting to be put behind bars and a woman you gotta get. What? Come on, Sonny. Even a blind bat can see it. Oh, well. Clock again. Yep. I'm pretty, Emma. You didn't have the chance to tell me what happened to your brother. He left Clawville, and I haven't talked to him since. Oh, I'm sorry. But I received an unexpected letter two weeks ago from the Sura province. Someone dropped it off at my door. Was it him? He wrote the letter, that's for sure. I could smell the jungle when I opened it. But whether he was the one who delivered it, I don't know. Have you tried to find him? He'll find me if he wants to, Sonny. I know he's not guilty, and that's enough. But he's still wanted in Clawville, right? Yeah. Well, I'm sorry for playing a part in all of this. I know, Sonny. The past is the past. You know, you've truly changed, Marty. You try to hide it, but you've changed. Thanks, boss. Just uh, don't call me boss, okay? We're partners. I've also forgiven you, you know. I don't remember asking for it. I'm not mad anymore. Blow me, Sonny. Do you always have to have the last word? Of course not. I've also forgiven you. Well, I don't even know what to think. I wouldn't like to be in your place, Sonny. But this doesn't change the things that already happened, you know? Your memories remain the same. Easy to say, Marty, but I feel like nothing's the same anymore. Even my fondest memories have been stolen from me. You mean she stole them? Yeah. Maybe you should look for her. You know, you could find her. You've got the connections. I could have done it already. Maybe I was too cowardly. Maybe I should look for her one day, at least for my daughter's sake. Maybe I should... Maybe you should go back to the nursery school. I know you're just clucking with me, but believe it or not, I've thought about it. And what's keeping you? Hmm. <laughs> I can't stand children. I can't talk to them. I can't drink a smoke with them. I just don't know what to do with them. Oh, yeah. That's quite a problem. If nothing else, I'm still keeping this picture. The blue side of the moon. So, you know him after all. Of course I know him. It's M.B. Davis, the greatest musician ever. But sometimes it's just fun to tease you, boss. I'd like to know how many times you did that to me. You see, I can still surprise you even after 10 years. You know it's just nine, don't you? Of course, I know. All the tastes of the sun. We've done a lot of stupid things over the years, huh? More than we should have, that's for sure. Well, memories grow more beautiful with time. Today, I think what we did was done right. It's a miracle we didn't burn down the city. You see? We're getting better. 
I don't even remember why I kept this article. I guess everything's about selfish reasons in the end. Many heroes become heroes out of selfishness, Marty, but not all of them. There are many unsung heroes, too, who already knew that nobody was going to hear about their deeds. I hope you're not talking about us. No, Marty. We're not heroes. Ah, uh, yeah. Role models exist so that when we're finally mature enough, we can bring them down. Well, if we have anything else to ask the old beaver, this is the last chance. Hey, don't steal my style. Just learning from the best. Let me give you some advice. Don't. Since when do you drive a wonder machine like that, old beaver? Uh, no, no, that's not mine. My son left it to me for safekeeping while he's working abroad. The cubs still visit home often, then. Ah, uh, they're good kids. They come to visit me several times a year, and if they're not here, I still have you boys. Am I right? You're fortunate indeed, Uncle Mullen. Sure I am. Seems like the kiosk is still a good business. It's still not too late for us, you know. I'll grab Laura, and we'll all just get out of the city. Wouldn't it be great? I never promised that, but yeah, it would be great. So, we're gonna get ourselves shot to pieces already, or what? Hell yeah. It's still not too late, Sonny. Get your fat old chicken ass in a car, and get the hell out of here. You know, if we survive this, we might need a couple of good lawyers. You could be right about that, Marty. Who do you think will sue us first, Wessler or the PD? My bet's on good old blood boil. I'll take it. Maybe it would have been better if I chose the legal profession. Then I'd have killed myself a long time ago. I have a feeling if a nuclear bomb fell on the city, this place would still be standing. Yeah, and Mullen would be there, too, even if there were no one left to buy newspapers. Oh, that's quite romantic, Sonny Honey. Extremes are always romantic, Marty, my boy. Will we buy a newspaper here tomorrow? Oh, look what I found! Furry gods, another chicken police story. And one of my favorites, too. Meredith outdid herself when she wrote this one. Yeah, I can imagine. You know, Sonny, you could read one one day. They're not as bad as you think. 
If it's about me, and you, then I want none of it, thanks. Reality's more than enough. You're still mad at Meredith, aren't you? That woman screwed us over. She was supposed to write true stories based on our real notes. Yeah, maybe she didn't want her readers dying of boredom. Anyway, the fly in the soup, the bloody New Year's Eve, and the seventh rule of predation are all based on reality. Yeah, and the other seven? Uh, nothing's ever good enough for you, huh, old fart? Maybe once I'm retired, I'll read one of those chicken police novels. I can already see us on the next front page. Or maybe in the obituaries. Ah, you cranky, croaking old crow. Hope Marty's gonna be right. And good old Mullen is still on duty. Eternal, like the Knights of Clawville. And the pain in my back. At least there are some safe places left in the city. There's no such thing as a safe place, Marty. Remember that, and you won't be too disappointed. Furry God, Sonny. Never have anything nice to say. No, never. Hey, old man. Sun's not even up yet, and you're already open? You know what's my secret, Sonny boy? What? I never close. That clever. How can I help you, lads? I see you're gone somewhere. Well, Sonny's going to die. I'm just wrapping up a delicate case. So, you'll be off to the Westler residency then? You're sharp, old beaver. Well, me dear lads, I'm glad I got to know you. Hey, don't you start too. <laughs> that I'm just kidding. Got any good advice? I always have some for you, lads. Don't get shot, for example. That's very wise advice. Why haven't you told us before? Could have saved Sonny some painful memories. If you carry on like that, Marty, you too can learn how it feels. <laughs> you too. Do you have any uh, fresh information for us, Uncle Mullen? Of course. Still crisp and warm like a fresh newspaper. Ask away. Does the name Albert mean anything to you? I know multiple Alberts, Sonny. Which one do you mean? Albert Wessler. I see you're in a funny mood, Sonny boy. I'm not joking, Mullen. But I'm surprised there's something I know and you don't. Hmm. And, and who is this Albert, anyway? Ibn Wessler's hidden son, maybe? Even better, my friend. His secret twin brother. Oh, oh, you've walked into trouble there. I was hoping you could tell me something useful about him. I, I can, Sonny boy. Avoid him. Avoid the whole Wessler family. Those who happen upon secrets that deep sink without a trace. Well, I used to be a professional swimmer, didn't you know? No, I didn't. I lied. What do you know about that asylum? Uh... What's it called? Since there's only one of those around Clawville, I know which one you mean, Sonny. It's an ancient mansion, easily around a hundred years old for sure. Or more. But what do you want to know about it anyway? We actually just got out of there. <laughs> that explains everything. Seriously, what do you know about it? The place is self-sufficient in theory, but in reality, the Crown maintains it. No one knows the exact reason why, but according to gossip, they used to keep someone in there. Someone who was either part of the royal family, or just very close to the fire. But who knows? Maybe it's just a legend? Well, they say we're legends too, and we're standing right in front of you. Am I right? What can I say then? <laughs> this whole city is full of legends. This Albert, he had to paint a picture of Natasha at his brother's request. Uh, let me guess. He fell in love with her. Yeah, classic, huh? 
Then he killed his brother and took his place. Yeah, well, that's a classic too. So, you're telling me who goes by Ibn Wessler is not really Ibn Wessler? Exactly. He's Albert, a dangerous lunatic with multiple personality disorder. Ha <laughs> lads, I guess that Miss Marble's going to write another one of those novels about this. You mean Meredith? Oh, that's just what we need. <laughs> Once you sold your soul, it's too late to cry about it, sonny boy. That's what I keep telling him. Do you know Dr. Quetzal? Do you mean Professor Quetzal Coatulus? Yeah, now you laugh at this, but we went to university together. You did what? Do I not look the type to you? No, you, well, I didn't mean that. I just uh, didn't know you, uh, you went to university. I studied psychology, Sonny. Only I forgot to graduate. That's why my father died. So that's why you know the animals so well? No, I know them well because I have a newspaper stand and I talk to hundreds of animals each day. And I listen to the everyday problems of almost all of them. There's no better lesson in animal studies. You surprise me every time, old beaver. And what do you know about him? Can he be trusted? You're afraid he screwed you. He looks like a terribly dishonest snake, but don't let your prejudices overshadow what your wattle tells you. Quetzal's one of the kindest hearted and most honest animals I've ever known. That's good to know, Uncle Mullen. Or rather, uh, Professor Mullen. Hey, 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 don't get cocky with me, little chicky. What do you know about the Wessler Mansion, Uncle Mullen? That if you're about to go there, bring a tank with you. Or two. Dangerous, you mean? Dangerous? Ha <laughs> ha! It's a fortress, sort of. Giant walls, watchtowers, and of course, Wessler's hired pubs are waiting for you there. Yeah, sounds great. It's a beautiful place, I must admit. <laughs> At least you'll kick the bucket with mouths hanging open in wonder. That's something. Good attitude, my lad. Keep it. Do you have any, uh, friend? Hope Marty's gonna be right. So, we're looking for more evidence? No, I was just thinking we could take another look. You know, just in case. Mmm, okay, sure, but... Don't even ask, Marty. You're really becoming sentimental. One more word and I swear I'm... Yep, I'm gonna shut it. Well, they couldn't even manage to scrape it off. Useless pincushions. They're always half-assed, Sonny. You drive me crazy. Leave them be. Your record is perfect. You've been on the force for 15 years. Almost 10 of that with me. That's why I deserve a medal. Get out. Wind down. Resign. Become... Uh, let's see. Anything. Uh, if you only knew how much I've thought about that. But I'm simply not good at anything else. Either I'm a gangster or a cop. I've got too much of a backbone to be a gangster. Also to be a cop, Marty. That word. You don't want to go in there just like that. It's a closed crime scene. I hope you're just messing with me, Marty. Of course I'm messing with you. Let's get inside there and see how much the boys have messed up the place. You know, Sonny, when we entered the room and saw the girl... Deborah. Yeah, her body. I called you every name in the book inside my head. I just had enough, you know? I wanted to quit. What kept you with me? Was it just curiosity? No. I just wanted to see your downfall, boss. I wanted to be there when you met your end, get humiliated or even shot. Wow. Well, thanks for your honesty, Marty. But then everything changed on the ship. On the ship? Why there? I don't know. Being tied up with you, waiting for certain death, 
I know I lashed out at you, but in truth, I felt there was no place I'd rather be. It was my place on that fucking burning ship with you, even if we both died there. Know what I mean? I think I do, Marty. I think I do. So, I guess there's nowhere to go but forward, huh? Nothing left to do but kill a rat. As the chicken police. For the last time? For the last clucking time, partner. Swear? I swear. All right. Let's hit the road. Natasha became even more mysterious with every detail we learned about her. You fell for her hard, huh? It's nothing like that, Marty. I only met her one time. It just makes me crazy if I can't solve something. And she's something I just can't solve. Maybe you have to accept this one, Boss Bird. That woman's out of your league. From a different world entirely. Eh, you're probably right. Who are you? Who are you really? Who are you? Hmm. Human, huh? My partner loves these weird things. Your who? I got a new partner when you left. When Blood Boil fired me? Sure. When you were fired. His name is Melvin, a little greenhorn of an otter. And where exactly is he? I have no idea. We worked together for one day. Then I told everyone I wasn't going to work with anyone but you. But you hated me. Yeah. I was even a little afraid they'd call you back. But Blood Boil got it. So he let me work alone. That uh, feels strangely comforting. So Marty has a partner. So what? I'm not jealous. You are. Nice. Yeah, it really is. Any better? Not really. I'm curious about how they killed her. There were no injuries on her body as far as we could see. Well, if all goes well, we'll learn about that soon. Or not. Or not. Wouldn't be the first time. Strange, but I have a terrible feeling of deja vu. Ah, you know, Sonny, few places are as cozy as the hot dog at dawn. You have a point. The silence, the fog, the sunshine slowly devouring the sleeping city. The smell. Yeah, the cobbler district has its own distinctive aroma, that's for sure. But wait, do you smell that? Ah, it seems Zip is ready with the first batch of coffee. That's waiting only for us, my friend. Hello, Big Boss. Hail to thee, O oh father of all syrups. Don't look into its light, Sonny. Roachtown stirring. Thank the gods we're not going to be here when it's fully awake. I think the buzzing of the hive has its own charm, you know? Yeah, from afar, on a postcard maybe. But for real? Oh, thanks, but no thanks. Last time we were here, it didn't take much, right? Almost lost our beaks back there in the hive. Yeah, and it was a fish who nearly got us. Hope I'll never have to set foot in Roachtown ever again. It seems so peaceful now, huh? 
like a sleeping big cat. Peaceful now, but when it wakes, you're done. You mean Laura, don't you? Yeah. I admit I miss her, but I'm also a little afraid to go home to her. I'm not surprised, since she hasn't heard from you in days. She's gonna pluck you, Marty. Yeah. I must be crazy, but I love this city. She almost finished us in the last two days, but in the end, we came out on top, right? It's like a never-ending tango of death. Danza de la muerte. I didn't know you spoke French, Marty. Maybe tonight you'll succeed. Does it still work? Who knows? Maybe Zip's keeping it for decoration, or living in it. I can easily imagine. Poor bastard. Once this broken down old car... Ah, old Zip's finally come to his senses. I think we may have got to him. We get to everybody, Boss Bird. Everybody. It's a pleasant surprise, that's for sure. Well, he's out. He's brave indeed, or an idiot. They're often the same, Marty, and you should know. <laughs> Did you know that Caston Mavis is gonna play here next week? What? You hear that, Sonny? It's a sign. We can't die tonight. I was just joking, Marty. Oh. You hear that, Marty? It's a sign. We can still die tonight. For a second, I believed he was actually gonna play here. At the Hop Dog? Near Roach Town? Really? <laughs> Your fault, then. For a second, I believed... At the Hop Dog... I'm gonna try the food here one day. Oh, you have to die of something, right? No, oh, it can't be that bad. Though, I'm sure old Zip's not making it out of premium faux meat. You have such a delicate way of putting things. You can be glad if he's not serving you one of your relatives. <laughs> you're right about that. Eat garbage? Yeah, it's more Marty's kind of thing. Hey, Zip, listen here. This coffee... It's two days old. And? Uh, nothing. We didn't get it from this, did we? Would that bother you? Yeah. So? We didn't get it from... I had such a feeling... I had such a... You said it, not me. Why don't you hire a cook, Zip? Or at least a dishwasher? I know just the guy. Strapping young lad, got quite a big mouth, but he's not that bad. Though he does smell like chicken. Don't you mean that Marty guy? Eh, I heard horrible things about him. They say he names all his guns. Well, he's a flop with chicks. Hits first, asks later. Yeah, a real chicken shit. Hey, I'm right here. We know, Marty. That's why it's fun. Ah, blow me, both of you. So what, uh, that Marty guy? Yeah, I'd rather pass on him. When I made him do the dishes last time, he broke more than he cleaned. Aha, very funny. So what, uh, Let's say hi to the old trash panda. You mean a last goodbye, right? He just stands there, waiting for his fate. Zip's a ballsy guy, I gotta admit. Hello, Zip. I see they kicked you out. You know, Sonny. They told me I could stay in there for 48 hours if I wanted. Well, maybe you should have done that. Shit, I had enough. 
Fuck it. You understand? When you interrogated me, you opened my eyes. I don't give a shit about him, about Whistler and his henchmen. Let them come if they want. It's not gonna be easy for them. You can be sure of that. That's the zip we know and love. Thanks, Marty. So, uh, why are you here? One last coffee before the end. Are you going to get him? We don't have a choice, Zip. We're grabbing the rat by the tail. No screwing around. No playing it nice. Ah, I see Ibn's really got to you. Just Sonny. I'm like this all the time. Yeah, that's true. And what do you expect will happen when you get there? They'll either let us in, or we'll blow open the doors and go in guns blazing. How hard can it be? Well, I'm not sure you know what you're up against, boys, but it's your funeral. I'm just glad I got to know the legendary chicken police. Hey, 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 don't write us off yet. I'm just getting ready for all possibilities, Marty. Hey, chicken coppers. Yeah, Zip? Take care of your feathers for me, okay? <laughs> Will do, Zip. Don't worry, I'll protect this smelly old bird. All in all, thanks, Zip. You've been a great help. Thank you too, boys. You really opened my eyes. If I see Wessler again or any of his goons, I'm gonna plug him right there. I'm not sure that's what we're suggesting. One more coffee, boys? Thanks, Zip. Maybe next time. If there is a next time. It's almost impossible to think of you as a real doctor, old bird. According to rumor, that is. Believe it or not, I had a great future ahead of me. But the world simply wasn't ready for my genius. Well, it probably never will be. Ooh. They didn't have any landscapes, eh? Oh, leave me alone, Sonny. It's almost unbelievable that Bubo was once a real doctor. I remember how beautifully you played, Ursula. Come on, Sonny. You're making me blush. It was a long time ago. I want to know the details. Ursula used to play the piano at a place called the Coconut Cauldron every weekend. It was a lovely place. And she was a lovely little thing, too. Yeah, you said it, Doc. Oh, boys, enough. Next time, I'll play something for you. I promise. Now, I hope there's gonna be a next time. Said the dead man. How are your secret experiments coming on, Doc? That's why they call them secret. I see. I'm not gonna set foot in there. I'd have to arrest the old owl. How's it going, Papa Bubo? <clears throat> Very well, thank you. I've lost a bit of weight recently because of my death, you know. Ah, I see. Sorry to hear that. Get well soon, Papa. Thanks, son. Uh, one more thing, Paps. Yes, my boy? Are you done? Uh, yeah, sorry. <clears throat> sorry. Good evening, Papa Bubo. Memories, huh? I remember every day. Mostly because I've had a limp ever since. Next time, tell your partner not to shoot you with a shotgun. Well, that's very good advice, Bubo. Thanks, I wish I'd heard it before. Even looking at it hurts. 
Sometimes I think about what a hot and uh, popular gal Ursula used to be. Sometimes I... No hard feelings? What can I say, boys? I have a big, soft heart. You sure do, Ursula. Would you like a nice hot cup of tea? No, thanks. We just came to say goodbye. Why? You going somewhere? Traveling? Uh, no, we're just uh, visiting a, uh, a nice place in the city. Sonny's gonna die. Shut up, Marty. So it's a case. Well, be careful, boys. And I'm sorry I snapped at you the last time. You don't need to say that, Ursula. We deserved it. You're a good boy, Sonny. And Marty's a downright saint. Oh, come on, Ursula. Stop that. How is the old owl? He's old and grumpy. But he's always like that. Wait a minute. Isn't he supposed to sleep now? He is. I mean, Reginald's never truly asleep. Not entirely. He just shuts down. Even now? Yes. I gotta see that. Take care of yourselves, boys. Will do, Auntie Ursula. Hey, don't be saucy, young man. Looks a bit tired. Us too. I'm not sure I dare look in the mirror right now. Don't do it, Marty. No matter how grumpy he is, we can always rely on him. Hey, Bubo. Hello, old man. <laughs> is he asleep? But his eyes are open. Uh, Bobo! Uh, hey, what is it? Uh, I wasn't sleeping. You were something. What the hell are you doing here, chickens? Sonny wanted to say hi before he suffers an unpleasant death of lead poisoning later tonight. Would you shut the clock up, Marty? You're not funny. I am a little bit. You're going to Wessler's, huh? Bingo. We're gonna put an end to this madness. Ooh. Or you're stirring up an even bigger madness, am I right? Well, that's always a possibility. Get yourself killed for all I care, but don't come here covered in blood. Because I'm not gonna open the door for you, I swear. Oh, thanks for the support, old fart. Don't mention it, you old gizzard. Can I give you a piece of advice, Martin? Of course, Bubo. Go on. Take care of the old rooster, okay? <laughs> That's all I ever do, Doc. Can I give you a... Was shining and all the ducks were in a row. I felt ready. The pieces of the grand puzzle were laid out on the table. I just needed to piece them all together. A revealing glance or a careless word and I'd have the answer. I knew we were in the right place. I knew it was nearly over. Was Natasha really just a victim? Or did she know everything? Was she controlling the puppets from behind the curtain? 
Well, if you don't know where to go, go straight ahead. What could possibly go wrong? Here I am, Natasha. I hope you're waiting for me. Furry gods. I knew he was rich, but wow. Half the city is in his hands, Marty, and half the Council of Twelve. I think we'll catch a big fish today. Don't count your chickens. I'm sure Wessler's expecting us, and Natasha too, I hope. You hope? If I'm right, she could be our only chance of survival. Lovely prospects, huh? I've had worse. Really? Oh, this place has its own greenhouse. What do you think's inside? 100% humidity and unbearable heat. Oh, not like that. Could they be growing rarities in there? Or maybe some chicken-eating giant flower monsters. What? Oh, you just made that up, right? Nah, I'm sure there's no such thing. <laughs> Do you remember that case? When that old weasel met us in a greenhouse just like this one? Of course I remember. We barely talked for five minutes, but you drank two full glasses of brandy with that old guy. I needed hydration. It was boiling in there. Hydration, huh? A real jungle grows in the middle of the concrete jungle. And the poet is lost in the jungle. Huh, one of Wessler's ancestors, maybe. Wessler's ancestors were poor cobblers. More likely, this represents what he thinks of himself. I wonder how chivalry is compatible with organized crime. Eben was planning to leave the underworld. When his twin brother tore out his tongue, poked out his eye, killed him, and took his place? Yeah. Must be some famous historical figure. How are you with history? Uh, not so good. Hmm. You know, I've always been fascinated by the Founding War, especially the last great battle between the Alliance and the Swamp Clans. Don't believe the tales they tell about the war, Marty. There's nothing glorious or beautiful in it. Just endless suffering and misery. And a lot of money, of course. That too. Maybe one day, you'll get your own statue at the PD, boss. I can almost see it now. Not while Blood Boil's alive. Oh, yeah, that's true. Maybe one day... What the hell is it? Water tower? Turret? A frickin' lighthouse? I think it's a monument to an enormous ego, Marty. Well, anyone who builds a tower this big must be trying to compensate for something. Or he just has too much dough. It's a long way down. Well, we could finally find out if you can fly or not. Wanna try? Quite the steed, isn't it? Seems nowadays organized crime pays well in Clawville. <laughs> Are you surprised? The chicken police retired. Well, they say the team's back together again. Nah, that's impossible. Oh yeah, it's true. We could also drive around in one of these, huh? Do you think we would have made it as gangsters? I don't think so, Marty. We're born to be suckers. Honest suckers, at least. Same thing. Wessler sure has a sense of style. Do you mean his car or Natasha? Both. Fair enough. It's a long way. Wessler. Is this a mansion, or a grand palace? Or a small city? Well, if it comes to hide and seek, Old Westler will have an advantage. 
a serious advantage. Look at all these plants. It's like nature is claiming back what's hers. Yeah, amazing. Strange how someone so rotten inside, like Wessler, can still dream something so beautiful to surround himself with. Look at all these plants. Hey, not so fast, chickens. Please excuse my partner. He didn't mean to be rude, it's just his uh, terrible habits, as you may already know. Look who's here. What a surprise, our biggest fans. What do you think, should we give them our autographs? Please tell me there's gonna be a glorious shootout. If we're lucky, Marty, if we're lucky. Please tell... Ah, look what the cat dragged in. Funny, I don't recognize them. Well, maybe if they had some guns with them? Tommy guns? Oh yeah, now I remember. The two suckers in the luxury van you shot to pieces. Twice. Exactly. <sighs> what are you doing here, chickens? Would you like us to finish what we started? We'd love to have fun with you boys, but we need to talk to your boss. And while we're at it, the lady of the house is also expecting us. Is that so? Yeah, that's so, horny. In that case, I guess there's no reason for us to waste your precious time. Is that right, Gabriel? Oh, get the hell out of our sight while there are still feathers on your skin, chickens. Easy, pal. We're not even here anymore. Until next time, boys. Do you sense that, Sonny? Hmm, I do sense something. A case of hyper-stupidity. And utter incompetence. You're right. Don't shit with me, you foul! It won't work well for you. I'm afraid my partner speaks the truth, gentlemen. Such tall and handsome creatures, aren't they, partner? Sure are, partner. <sighs> Do you sense that, Sonny? This must lead to Wessler and Natasha's suite. Let's get the big guns out and kick the door down. No need for that, Marty. We'll wait until they invite us in, like real gentlemen. Then maybe we'll need the guns. But I hope it won't come to that. Oh, my trigger finger's itching, Sonny. Someone's gotta pay. Relax, Marty. Someone is gonna pay. Tonight. Yeah, just don't let it be us. It's like the vegetation's trying to suffocate these beautiful walls. Maybe it will. Maybe in a hundred years, nothing will be here but plants. An endless, planet-sized jungle. That's quite a dark thought. Yeah, it is. It's like some ancient virus is poisoning the place. Do you mean the plants or Albert? Both, I guess. It's like so This place is incredible, but it kind of gives me the creeps. Because you know what lies behind the beauty. With Natasha, too? I haven't decided yet. I wonder how Albert feels about this place. From a cell to a mansion. Insane, isn't it? You took the words right out of my beak. Huh. I wasn't expecting to see Olivia here. She's real close to Wessler. But how much does she know? Much more than me, I guess. That wouldn't be hard. Maybe you should talk to her. She was your girlfriend, after all. Uh, we only had two dates, and they weren't great. Why am I not surprised? Maybe you should talk to... Ah, what a pleasant surprise. 
Hello, Olivia. Sweetie. Get lost. Uh, what did you say, ma'am? Turn around and get the hell out of here now, if you want to make it out with feathers intact. <laughs> Come on, Olivia. Don't worry about us. We know what we're doing. Martin! Huh? Don't you get it? You have to get out of here or you'll be in danger, and also her. Do you mean Natasha? Please calm down, miss. We have to talk to Mr. Wessler and Miss Katsenko. You really don't understand, do you? What do they not understand, Olivia? So, what is it exactly that our guests don't understand? I was trying to tell the detectives that Mr. Wessler's very tired and doesn't welcome guests this early. He gets rather irate if he's being disturbed at this hour. I'm sure Mr. Featherland and Mr. McChicken can wait here while Ibn refreshes himself. I'll entertain them until then. Thank you, Miss, uh, Kitsenko. Please, Sonny. I thought we've already discussed this. Call me Natasha. Uh... Ahem. <clears throat> Please, Natasha. Can we talk to you in private? Martin? It's all right, Olivia. These gentlemen are my friends. Yes, Miss Katzenka. I tried to warn you. Thanks, Olivia? <sighs> I tried to warn you. Maybe you should talk to her. You know, I had a dream before we came here. I saw Natasha with a bloody mouth and red claws. And? What does that tell you? I don't know, Marty. I admit it. I haven't been this on edge for a long time. Uh, I'm just angry. Truth is, I'm not entirely sure why. Your sense of justice kicking in? More like my sense of don't fuck with the chicken police. There she is, the femme fatale. Yeah, our fate's in her hands. And what lovely hands they are, huh? With sharp claws, Marty. Come on, Sonny. Deep breath. Pull yourself together. The truth is, Ibn isn't really in a good shape today, gentlemen. He's rather furious. Are you sure this can't wait? You commissioned us, Natasha, and we barely escaped with our combs intact. So you know who left the threats? Oh, we know much more than that, Natasha. We even know where you used to work. We talked to Madame Savas. Wild gods! Why didn't you tell us? Do you think it's easy for a woman to talk about such things that she used to be an escort? Along with Molly? So you know. Yeah, I know, Natasha. I also know all of this was a trap. Believe me, I tried to handle things the least painfully I could. You weren't even supposed to know. A lot shouldn't have happened. Poor Deborah shouldn't have had to die. Dear sweet Deborah. Cold, stiff Deborah. Please don't say that. A price worth paying? You cannot think I had anything to do with that. You just cannot. I don't know, Natasha. Please, Sonny, tell me, what is going on? You have to know, right? Please. Excuse me for making you wait, detectives. I'm having a rough morning after a long night. Is that so? Our night was also kind of long. To put it mildly. I was just telling the gentlemen that you were exhausted, my dear, and they should come back another time. I'll escort them out. Oh, honey, no need for that. My door is always open to the legendary chicken police. Please, come on in, guys. Let's start talk in my room. Then this way, please. You just stay here, my darling. I'm sure our conversation will bore you to death. Please, 
go and refresh yourself for, uh, tell Olivia to go make some coffee. Yes, dear. Whatever you like. Please, uh, follow me, gents. Lead on, Wessler. So long, sweetheart. Goodbye. Come on, Sonny. I tried to warn you. Thanks, Olivia? <sighs> this estate is rather impressive, Mr. Wessler. Well, thank you. I suppose it took years and years of cumbersome work to build it. Yeah. As you say, Mr. Featherland, I'm rather proud of it. You should be. Whoever built this place has a reason to be proud of himself. Are you trying to say something, sir? No, no, just thinking aloud. I can see you're very attracted to nature. I thought rats preferred the urban environment. Oh, don't take that the wrong way, of course. Not all rats are the same, detective. Natasha and I uh, love the closeness of nature. Yeah, especially lately. I find cold, close walls repulsive. I, I, I don't understand why you're telling me this. Oh, it's nothing. Not important. I'd just like to grab him and throw him out the window. Impressive bed. Looks cozy. Sure is better than a cell. That's right, Marty. I'm not sure I understand, gentlemen. We'll see about that. It almost gives me the creeps just looking at it. This painting. It's beautiful and rather provocative. Almost makes my comb stand up. I'm not surprised. But the corner is missing. You're right, Sonny. You're quite the observer. Well, yeah, this painting's unfortunately damaged. I don't know where the missing piece could be. You don't know? Well, if you're interested, we know exactly where it is. Really? Really. It's here with us. An insignificant little piece, isn't it? But there's an exciting cat scratch on it. More like a rat scratch, because it's a monogram. A.W. That's... Albert Wessler. He's a great painter. I don't know if you've heard of him. Enough! Out with it already. What are you trying to say? I have no time for your childish charades. Easy, Wessler. We'll get to that in a bit. It's unbelievable how much trouble one single painting can make. Yeah, I don't know what you mean, detective. I'll make it clear for you soon enough. Be patient, Mr. Wessler. Even my patience has its limits, you know. I'm not surprised painting it drove Albert crazy. Yeah, would you like a drink? This is a rather rare brandy. It lifts the spirits if I may be so, uh, poetic. Really? Tempting, but I need to keep a clear head, Mr. Wh it's a little early for that, isn't it? Yeah. Some people need coffee to start their day, Mr. Featherland. I start with a good brandy. Damn. You know what? In your place, I'd do the same. Maybe I should confiscate it as evidence. Do you keep a revolver in your bedroom? Yeah, a bad habit. One who has a lot to lose has a lot to fear. I agree. Have you been suffering from nightmares recently? Yeah, no. I sleep like a baby if you want to know. Really? I've been plagued by them. So I always sleep with my gun. Yeah, I'm uh, 
sorry to hear that. It's an unmistakable sign. Interesting. Now that I know who he really is, he doesn't even resemble Ibn Wessler. The whole thing is so transparent. We must finally put an end to this case, even if it kills us. We must... F so, uh, what do you want to know? I've heard you've been through a rather eventful few days. Oh, you have rather good informants. Yeah, that's true. I should tell you, I see and hear everything that happens in the city. And you, uh, you are exceptionally resilient. No offense. None taken. But tell me, are we going to flatter each other for a long time, or are we finally done with the courting? Straight to the point. I like it. Yeah. So let's continue like that, shall we? What do you want? How dare you intrude upon me in my own house? Oh, forgive us. Our moral compass has been confused a little bit after someone tried to kill us several times in the last 48 hours. With fire, with machine guns, I could go on. And while we're at it, you could answer some of our questions. If you've nothing to hide, you have nothing to fear. And then we'll just leave you alone. All right. I'll go along with your childish little game. I would have had a long and tedious day ahead of me anyway. So, can we start? With pleasure, Mr. Wessler. My time's precious, chickens. Get to the point before I lose my patience. Don't rush us, Mr. Wessler. We'll get to the point when it's time. I have no idea what she sees in you, but Natasha's been seriously worried about you. Yeah, she, uh, really worries more than usual, but it's understandable. Those disgusting messages. Disgusting, all right. Do you know why that word exactly? Why did they write that specific word everywhere? Since, uh, since, uh, you've been to the Nile, I guess you know the answer to your question. Didn't it bother you, Wessler, what Natasha used to do? Surely it must have upset you. Why? Did it upset you when you discovered your wife did the same thing? What did you just say? What did you think, chicken? That I didn't know? Yeah, don't make me laugh. I know about everyone who ever set foot in that place. I can even tell you who Molly's regulars were, if you're interested. You son of a bitch. Sonny, don't. Yes, detective? Not yet. You're right, Marty. It's not worth it. You're funny, you know that? About the painting. Yeah. My brother Albert made it. He's a great talent, but uh, still, uh, he's a rather troubled individual. Such self-criticism. What did you say? My partner means that you and your brother are very much alike. Identical twins, if I'm not mistaken. Indeed. But, uh, what does that have to do with the painting? We'll get to that. Don't worry, Mr. Wessler. So Albert made the painting at your request, is that right? And the one that's in Natasha's room in the Tsar, too. Yeah, exactly. Is that a crime? No, it's not a crime in itself. This picture, it's rather strange, you know? Why do you think so? It's just me, Natasha, and my brother. The photo doesn't tell much in itself, yes. But if you already have the right information, suddenly it starts to talk. Really? He fell in love with her, didn't he? Who do you mean? Albert, of course. He fell in love with Natasha. All those sessions while he was painting the pictures. Were you there every time? You mean, um, me? You. No, I mean, while Albert was painting, yeah, but I wasn't there all the time. Albert was there all along. And do you think he could have fallen in love with Natasha? That's why he escaped? 
What do you think happened to him? Who tore out his tongue? Eh, I have no idea. Did Natasha know about what happened to your brother? No, of course not. Do you love beautiful things, Wesler? I, eh, why do you ask that? Yeah, of course. You were afraid of losing her, weren't you? To him. Stop. Enough. If you want to ask something, ask clearly. Don't play with me. You understand? We're just doing our job. Then do it clearly. And quickly. Yeah, I'm really starting to lose my patience. We visited Albert's cell and found something he seems to have uh, forgotten to take with him in his great hurry. That's a big mistake. A classic, even. What the hell are you babbling about? This is Albert Wessler's love letter to Natasha. More like a confession. In which he tells her he's capable of doing anything for her. Even the most horrible things. Yeah, this letter doesn't prove anything at all. Albert is mad. Insane. He's not a... normal. No one would believe his word, don't you understand? But they believe yours, right? Because you're not Albert Wessler. You're Hobart Ibn Wessler, aren't you? How good it feels to be in his skin. How dare you? Just tell him, Sonny. I'm getting tired of this. You're just a cheap fake, Albert. You couldn't follow in your brother's footsteps even if you wanted to. No matter how hard you tried, you couldn't get Natasha either. Am I right? What? What did you just say? She hates you, doesn't she? She doesn't know, she doesn't understand why, but she hates you. It's instinctive. Yeah, what do you know? What could you possibly know about suffering and loneliness and the darkness? What could you know about hate, huh? My time's precious, chickens. Don't rush it. Albert is an imposter. He's not who he says he is, and might not even know who he really is. I have to concentrate on this first, to soften him up, and to avoid us being shot in the gizzard, of course. What were you thinking, Albert? How long did you think you could keep it up? Until the end of my life, if needs. Yeah, I cared about nothing except for her to love me. Not for who Ibn was, but for who I am. Why did you think that would happen? Everybody noticed the change. Yeah, I knew it would be hard, Santino. But I also knew animals see what they want to see. Eh, I didn't have to behave like Ibn. They only had to believe I'm him. Why did you decide to take your brother's place? Yeah, as you're curious. From the moment I laid eyes on Natasha for the first time. But I had to convince myself that this was the only way. You've never talked about your feelings for Natasha with your brother, am I right? Are you insane? Yeah, Abel would have had me killed immediately. And no one would ever know. So instead, you've done the same thing, haven't you? What a comfortable excuse. Comfortable? Do you think all of this was just some kind of cruel game for me? I had to destroy the person I loved and respected the most. Cry me a river. Yeah, you know, there's only a thin, fragile membrane between love and hate. If anything touches it, it tears immediately. You've felt like this before, haven't you? Yeah. I can see it in your eyes. You can analyze me until the sun goes down, Wessler. But you won't get far with that. Yeah, evasive answer. So I'm right. Did you ever believe that you were Ibn Wessler? 
Did I ever believe? I still do. I believed it all along. Don't you get it? I am Eben Wessler. And also, Albert Wessler. I see you're starting to understand. So you feel you're two people at the same time, even now. Does it sound crazy? Maybe it is. But he lives inside me. Sometimes he's even stronger than Albert ever was. Do you think you can avoid the gas chamber with this, Albert? Eh, I don't have to avoid anything, Sonny. You and your friend, uh, will never leave this place. It's better if you start getting used to the thought. You're not the cold-blooded killer you'd like to think you are. Eh, do you think so? Try me, detective. What made you think you could deceive Natasha? Because Natasha loved Ippon, in her own unique way. Yeah, and if there's anything that can blind an animal, it's love and hate. Everything revolves around these two things, Mr. Featherland. Is everything black and white to you? No. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Everything's gray in this world. Only two things have color. Love and hate. I see you understand now, Sonny. Yeah, we're not that different, you and I. Albert, you're everything I'm not. And I'm everything you're not, believe me. Yeah, if that makes it easier for you, detective. That was your plan. Take his place and live happily ever after. Why, isn't it good enough of a plan, Mr. Featherland? It was perfect, even in its imperfection. Which is? Ibn's ghost. His... his what? Oh, please don't take it literally, Mr. Chicken. I'm not talking about the uh, spirits. When Ibn died, I didn't just take his place, but also his role. He himself, uh, his essence, if you will. Yeah, though I guess that's uh, too much for you to understand. So you mean Ibn's here with us even now? He was here all along. Don't you get it? I am Hobart Ibn Wessler. I must get serious, because looking at the gun in Wessler's trembling hand, I'm afraid I don't have much time. Albert is a cruel psychopath, but maybe I can turn that cruelty against him. When was the moment you decided to kill him, Albert? When I drew the last stroke on that fatal painting, Mr. Fiddleland. When I glanced at it for the last time, and then at Natasha, who was shivering under the weight of my gaze. You simply fell in love with her? End of story? Not in the slightest, Mr. Fiddleland. Love is, uh, just chemistry. What I felt was more than that. Everybody thinks that, Albert. But we all feel the same. We're just fools. No, Mr. Featherland, not at all. At that moment, I knew what I was gonna do. I knew that the world was coming to an end if I didn't do it. It implodes on itself and ceases to exist. I couldn't let that happen. I couldn't. Let him have her, right? You simply wanted her for yourself. I wanted her for ourselves, Sonny. I was him by then. He just didn't know it yet. Do you think you can explain everything with your insanity? Don't be a fool, Sonny. Insanity is just a temporary state. Just a stop on the way to enlightenment. So you admit you're insane. That's surprising for your kind. Of course I'm not insane. Ah, well, here we are. Albert was insane. He lost all connections to reality. 
but I saved him. You mean, your Ibn? Both of us, Mr. Featherland. Okay. I almost understand everything now. Don't mock me, Mr. Featherland. You're still at the wrong end of a gun, you remember. It would be hard to forget. When did you decide that we too have to die? Can I be honest? I didn't want to hurt you, even after what you've done at the club, after interrogating Natasha and me so cruelly. I didn't care. You just saw what's on the outside, just scratching the surface. Until we found Deborah. I didn't even know about you finding her until the phone call from the Nile. Then it all became clear. I understood I underestimated you. I had to remedy that mistake before it was too late. You remove anyone if they happen to cross your path, don't you? Without batting an eye. Ibn had always been like that. Albert the opposite, so don't think I wasn't struggling, but uh, eventually, yeah. Courage won, every time. You mean fear? Yeah. What do you know about these concepts, Detective? You spent your life chasing petty nobodies until you turned into one of them. I may be a nobody, Mr. Wessler, but at least I know who and what I am. I'm Santino Featherland. Tell me, can you still tell who you really are? Albert, Ibn, both of them, neither. Enough, Santino. Enough games. Ask your last question before I get tired of you and pull the trigger. I'm very close to breaking him, but if I'm too hard on him, I could quickly be signing my death warrant. It's time to dig a little bit deeper and uncover Wessler's wounds. Natasha was kind to you, right? Too kind. Natasha was, uh, simply amazing, gentle, kind, lively, but still so, uh, distant. You're telling me. It's like she was from another world. A world where everything's full of charm and grace and everything's fragile and delicate. Uh, do you understand? I think I do, yes. I know Albert's touch would harm her. Albert is rough. Albert can't keep such a delicate thing in his arms. That's why you had to become Ibn, am I right? I didn't take Ibn's place, Mr. Featherland. I became one with him, can't you see? This is the only way I could comprehend and accept the miracle that was Natasha. Was? I... I think I've corrupted her. She's not that gentle and pure creature I painted on the canvas anymore. I ruined her. She became rotten under my hands. Maybe it's not too late, Albert. Tell her the truth and end this. No. You can't understand this. She can't either. I killed Ibn, but he also killed me. Can't you see? We're nothing without each other. You can't be two people at the same time, Albert. Nobody can bear the weight of the sins of two souls. Ibn loved her. I admired her. Ibn was crazy about her. I've been crazy for a long time. Ibn idolized her, and I hated her. And if there's anything more blind, more devoted, more extreme, and more true than love, it could only be hate, Mr. Featherland. It's an endlessly exciting, thrilling, and warm feeling. And infinitely red. Just like love. You know you're not going to be able to go through with it, right? That you won't be able to carry the weight. But you still did it. Why? Yeah, if I didn't kill him and become one with him, Albert would have died, Mr. Featherland. And the threats? Which one of you was that? Albert or Ibn? Who wrote them? And which one of you killed Deborah? In my world, Ibn and I are inseparable. Just like love and hate are one and the same. And I hate Natasha so much that I could destroy myself along with her, just so she would die with me. Are you familiar with this feeling, Mr. Featherland? More than life itself. You see? We're not so different after all. You and I have nothing in common, Wessler. You know why? Why, Mr. Featherland? 
Because if I were in your shoes, I would have pulled the trigger a long time ago. Goodbye, Sonny. So long, Albert. So, you heard everything. I heard everything. I'm sorry you had to find out like this. And thank you. If it weren't for you... Yes, both of you would be dead, I know. But believe me, I still thought carefully before firing. About who to target? You know, I truly loved Ibn. But this man wasn't him. You felt it, didn't you? Maybe I even knew it. I don't know. But I still can't believe it. It won't be easy to process for any of us. I'm sorry I dragged you into this. And regarding Molly... The cops! But how? How do they know? I have no idea, Marty. Do not look at me. I did not call them. Olivia? Don't worry, Natasha. They won't lay a finger on you. I promise. Please, Sonny. You don't need to worry about me. I don't want to be rude, Sonny, but I'm more worried about us than her. Hello, boss. Hello, boys. Now, before you say anything, we can explain. No need for that, Santino. Monica already told me everything. Monica? Hey, boys. What were you thinking? That I would just let you get killed without saying goodbye? Thanks, Mon. Should we say we uh, owe you one? You know already, boys. Shoes are my weakness. Hey, mine too. Of all that's furry, we don't want to hear that. And boys... Uh, yes, boss? Don't believe you'll get away with it so easily. I want a report on my desk from both of you with all the details. Am I clear? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. It'll all make sense, believe us. Right after I figure out myself what the hell just happened. What Marty's trying to tell you is that we had good reason to investigate outside the law. But we're sorry. What happened to you, Sonny? You're sorry? Did you hit your head? Why does everybody keep asking that? Why, indeed. So, can we go now, boss? W without getting handcuffed? Don't give me ideas, Santino. <laughs> Thanks, boss. Wouldn't have thought it, but I'm glad the old hound's here. Damn. What? Are you waiting for me to change my mind? Uh, no, sir. Then stop pecking around here. Yes, sir. Santino, you're doing that on purpose? No, sir. Never, sir. Then get the fuck out of here. I don't know if I've ever seen Monica in daylight. This means she's real, not just the ghost of the police station. So, you can finally ask her out on a date. I didn't even hear that. Our little savior. How could we ever repay her?
Thanks again, Mon. If not for you, those furheads would have put holes in us. No wonder, since you put holes in there, boss. Well, actually, that wasn't us. Then who was it? Natasha. Really? Hmm, I wouldn't have thought it of her. It's a pleasant surprise. It was for us, too, believe me. How did you know we were here? I always pay attention, Sonny. And because I know you like you are my own nestlings. No, oh, I love it when you say pretty little things like that. Don't get used to it, Marty. So, uh, what's your shoe size again, Mon? 35, Sonny. I like high heels. And because there's two of you, two pairs will do for a start. Anything for you, darling. I don't want just anything, Marty. I want shoes. Yes, ma'am. See you at the PD? At the PD, Mon. Santino, you're... Look at all these plants. It's like... Please tell me there's gonna be a glorious shootout. If we're lucky, Marty. Gentlemen. Gentlemen? We're honestly very sorry it had to end like this. Yeah, this peacefully. For myself, I'm glad, gentlemen. I would have sincerely regretted it if we had to shoot both of you, but unfortunately, that seemed to be the only solution to this uh, rather nasty situation. Fortunately, it didn't turn out that way. Joyful. Don't think we'll be behind bars for long chickens. Wessler may be dead, but his empire still won't crumble. Oh, look at that, he can talk. In complex sentences, too. Yeah, or something like that. Amazing. I hope we'll meet again, gentlemen. So do I, Shakespeare. And uh, while you're sitting in your cell, you could teach your famous manners to your friend, too. Maybe I will, Mr. Featherland. I certainly hope so, pal. So long, guys. <sighs> Do you think she was part of it? I don't think so, Marty. She seemed entirely honest. Maybe she was the only one who was honest with us the whole time. You may be right. Listen, Marty. Does Laura know about uh, you and her? That was before, Sonny. Laura and I were just getting to know each other. Olivia was only a couple of dates. You broke her heart, didn't you? I don't think she ever felt anything for me. Whatever you say, pal. Marty should talk to her. Hey, Olivia. Marty? I just, uh, wanted to thank you. For what exactly? For trying to save us. I didn't do it only for you, believe me. I loved my job while I had it. Now my employee is dead, so I don't have a job anymore. I didn't even think of that. Of course you didn't. Can I do anything to help? I think I'll manage. I always do. If there's anything at all... Thank you, Martin. There's no need for that. Look at that. The mongrel caught himself some big game. Now he can wag his tail. Yuck. The catch of a lifetime. You're a good boy, Bosco. Nice work. You know, folks, somebody's got to take care of the real police work while you're tearing up the city. Sorry for the mess, Bosco, but you know us. Yeah, unfortunately, I do. How did you catch them? After the gunshot, I was sure these two would show up. They have a habit of doing that. They were already in cuss before then, Sonny. We had the house surrounded. 
If you could have hung on, maybe nobody would have died. Hey, a second longer and it would have been us. <laughs> That's your story. Clock you sideways, Bosco. Nice catch, Bosco. You can mount them on your wall as trophies. Yeah, I wish I could, Sonny. Nice catch, Bosco. Yeah, I wish I could. What about him? How the hell did he wind up here? I don't know, but it's suspicious. You think someone hired him? Could be. What about him? How the hell did he wind up here? I don't know, but it's suspicious. You think someone hired him? Could be. You, what are you doing here? I was just driving around, you know. Trying to feed your grandpa? So, was it a case? Were you, uh, maybe investigating us? What can I say, Sonny? Am I busted? Did someone hire you to follow us? I just had to keep an eye on you and not get involved. That's all. I admit there were a couple of crazy situations when it was hard not to. But you managed somehow, right? A professional's a professional, my friend. Yeah, thanks. So you won't tell us who hired you, whatever we do? Unfortunately, I can't, my friend. I made a promise. You and your promises. Some people still take them seriously. You're a real piece of guano, you know that? Of course. I've learned everything from you, you old fart. I think I have an idea who hired you, Phil. Hey, stop it right there. I don't want to know who you think. Oh, are you afraid your reaction would give you away? Huh, you wish, pal. Anyway, it's good to see you here, Hawkeye. I'm glad you made it out alive. It didn't take you much. Yeah, not much. Maybe one day... Ah, look what garbage the wind brought in. Good gods, is this guy everywhere? Our faithful chronicler. I swear I'm gonna hang him someday. You called him here, didn't you? To witness our grand triumph or our fall. What? No! You're paranoid, old bird. You called him here. How the hell did you find your way here, Tim? Always where the trouble is. Sometimes I think you're the criminal mastermind behind all the dark dealings in this city. <laughs> I wish. I wish too, because then we could legally throw you in jail. <laughs> I love your sense of humor, Sonny. <laughs> I wasn't joking. So, where did you get the scoop? Are you kidding me? The whole city's talking about you. You've left quite the mess behind. That, I admit. Well, it's a miracle that all of the city smear sheet journalists aren't here already. Oh, while we're at it, will you give me an exclusive interview? Clock off, Tim. Hey! So, here they are, ladies and gentlemen. The chicken police, in the flesh. Damn it, Tim, drop it and cluck off. Oh, no, boys. This time, you deserve it. What the cluck did you say, boss? Stand up straight and try to look like someone who's glad to be alive. Uh, yes, sir, we'll try. Ooh, attention, chicken police. Say cheese.
me turning back I'm tired of being safe Long we're still lying in my bed All the corners are dead inside The whole world goes to black and me turning back I'm tired of being safe Clone will still lie Natasha. You were expecting me, weren't you? I wouldn't say that, but I'm not surprised. I just wanted to talk to you. About what exactly? You know very well. What do you think, Natasha? Why didn't she tell me? Because she loved you. Yeah. If it wasn't for you, she may have never left the place. Perhaps she'd still be there. Ah, sheep shit. We used to dream about falling in love with a nice man who comes and saves us someday. A knight in shining armor. You know, like, like in the fairy tales. And how did that work out for you? She fell in love with a good guy. I didn't. I envy her. I'm not that good guy, Natasha. But if it's any consolation, she could have found him. Maybe she's living with him right now. Somewhere on the other side of the world. Well, goodbye, Sonny. So long, sweetheart. Hey, Natasha, you have a light? I've been trying to smoke this sorry-ass cig all day. It's driving me crazy. Maybe you don't really need it. Hm. Maybe you're right. Maybe.